I'm Greg De Palma, and you're listening to Andrea Leanne's WTA Finals Hot Shots from Singapore on the Prime Sports Radio Network with lead tennis analyst and former top 15 player in the world, Andrea Leanne. All right, Andrea, Simona Halep turned her year around in Beijing to take over as the world's newest number one. Did she show the same confidence today in her win as she did over in Beijing? No, she sure did. The Romanian flags were flying. Her father was courtside on his feet cheering for his superstar daughter. Family and friends there. It felt like a Fed Cup match to me back in Romania in April where Simona really turned her ear around, got her mojo back in her hometown, and was able to then forge through and make the changes that she is needed in getting back to her brand of tennis, her style of tennis. We saw that today. Mm -hmm. The foot speed, the athleticism was so important on this court, Greg. It's slow, it's sticky, and she was able to move her feet well enough to move the ball around and get Garcia into very, very tight positions. Garcia showed the nerves we expected as uh, playing in her first WTA final in the singles. She did play the doubles there when she was ranked number one in the doubles with Kiki Milanovic, but it's different playing singles, and she just was not able to move well enough and got very, very nervous on the serve. The double fought at four all in that first set. Crucial, crucial point. But you have to give credit to Simona Halep, always the fighter, as Mary Pierce, who was commentating the match, said, Simona's always been a fighter. She always tries for every single point, and she showed that today. Great top spin, great serve, but it's the subtleties now we're seeing that she really improved Proved upon after the U.S. Open. She went back to Romania again. She took control of her training. She decided she was going to work on that serve, spend an hour a day on it, and it's showing now. It's the subtleties, as we said, that first serve percentage is 61%, but it's the second serve points that she won. She won 71% of the points on that second serve, and that is showing the confidence now she has in her game and the ability she has now to change up and place those second serves and not give Garcia a same look twice. She kept Garcia off balance the entire time to win the match 6-4, 6-2, and to move forward with her first win in that group. So uh, a lot, a lot of positives for Simona Halep. I uh, really feel right now that she's loving being number one. She's loving, uh, quite frankly, the atmosphere in Singapore and really looks like the favorite in that group. All right, another player getting revenge today and winning in straight sets, Caroline Wozniacki appears to have saved her best tennis for last by beating her nemesis this season, Elena Svitolina. How'd she do it? Carolyn Lozanagi, so smart, so crafty, and so resourceful. Lost to Spidalina, a nemesis, as you said, three times, twice this year in two finals. The Canadian Open in Dubai really stung. And for Caroline, who's reached seven finals, only won one title, she wanted more at this championships. She wanted to show why she was number one years ago, and she is showing really her best performance to date today. She was able to really adjust to the surface. Again, she's another good mover, like Halep, able to move those feet, quick steps, beautiful court coverage, and Spinalina struggled. She got very frustrated. As we said, when the ball bounces on this court, Greg, mm -hmm. it sticks, and you have to move up to the ball and through the shot to generate any type of pace. And for Spinalina, she just wasn't moving her feet well enough, and the frustration showed, and Wozanaki took full advantage of it. Again, Wozanaki realizing also that she's got to step up sometimes to the plate. She's a tall woman. She's six feet. She's got the frame to be more offensive on the court and knew that she had to do that. You pick on Caroline's backhand long enough and you pick on it for a whole year. <laughs> Finally, she says it's enough. And the backhand winners were stinging and stunning. And Alina really did not know what to do. So we credit Wozanaki for moving through 6-2, six 6-love. Six what a statement she is making. And quite frankly, Greg, I think she's one to look at for a number one in the world. All right. Uh, your prime sports spotlight today is two-time Grand Slam champ, current commentator Mary Pierce. Why did you choose Mary? Well, we're keeping up with the beat in Singapore, and that's because Mary Pierce, former world number one, Grand Slam champion, won the French Open, won the Australian. She has really proved that this wave of former stars like Mary Pierce, like Arantxa Sanchez, Kim Clasers, Lindsay Davenport, Chrissy Ever, all over there, really supporting the tour, supporting these top women, and really helping them. It's their feedback and their advice that has really proved instrumental in helping the Simona Halep's and the Carolyn Wozniacki's uh, really uh, look to how to navigate their careers on and off court. And so we're going to highlight Mary Pierce. Her commentating was 
spot on today. She's so good at it, but she also is a coach herself. And she was in Sofia at the ITF coaching convention with the Malayavas and with uh, this new group that has just become one of the fastest growing groups in the country. It's the Women's Tennis Coaching Association led by Ann Grossman Wunderlich, a former player. And it's now has thousands and thousands of members, a lot of former uh, female players on the pro tour who really are coaches now who understand the women's game, see it black and white, understand how to wrap their arms around it. But today it was about the WTA being so smart and so uh, really resourceful in bringing back these former champions to help their current group of top 20 that we salute. All right, with the first matches in the books for this round-robin format, day three tomorrow for Group White has both a Wimbledon quarterfinals rematch between Venus Williams and Yelena Ostapenko and a fire and ice battle between Muguruza and Pliskova. <laughs> so what do we anticipate in those exciting matches, Andrea? It's going to be 7.30 uh, local time tomorrow night, of course, 7.30 a.m. Our time, Venus Williams will take on Ostapenko, a rematch of their Wimbledon uh, battle. And, uh, of course, Venus won out there. It was much more conducive to the grass court surface. But this is going to be a little bit tougher. We've seen Venus. She's only played two matches since the Open, only had one win. And she's playing her way into shape here in Singapore. No question that the first serve was not what she wanted in the first match. She's going to have to improve that first serve percentage. She's going to have to move her feet more and play more aggressive tennis because Austin Penko can, as we know, hit winners from anywhere. And she's playing playing fearless tennis. This is her rookie uh, appearance at the WTA final, so she has nothing to lose. Her mother is out there. She is not, though, with her coach, Annabelle Medina Garrigus, and I think that is a real sticking point for her because she did not have the focus of the game plan in her first round. We'll have to see if she makes adjustments to that, adjustments to the surfaces, because she, like Svitolina, had a lot of trouble moving on the surface, as she herself said. So this one I give to Venus. I think experience will win out. I think she's got the weapons, and I think she will will raise her level, knowing that she must win this to stay in contention for number one. All right. And, and then, of course, we will then have, of course, the big match yeah. of the day. And to me, Muguruza and Pliskova, this is going to be the beginning of the rivalry that I think will captivate women's tennis for the next decade. We have fire and ice. We have, <laughs> of course, Pliskova, ice no emotion, and such control of herself out there, so stoic, so brave, has all the shots, knows how to, great shot selection, uses her head all the time, has the best serve in women's tennis, more aces than anyone this year. She's going to need the serve and tennis and the encouragement of Coach Renee Stubbs, pinch hitting here for her uh, in Singapore, to really be able to prevail over Muguruza, as she has most of in their head-to-head. She's mm -hmm. controlled the head-to-head -head until Cincinnati this year, where she did tighten up. But she's going to have to keep control of those nerves and move Muguruza around, open up the court with all the slices and dices she has to really prevail. But it's the Muguruza, who I think is probably the most intriguing personality women's tennis has today. Her story hasn't been told yet, but she is the one who has unfolded really as the player of the year as the WTA anointed this week. And to me, it's about Muguruza Again, keeping her motions in control, but still having that intensity in her game to play the aggressive style that she will need to beat uh, Pliskova. She's going to have to have more winners in 10, which she had in her last match. She's going to have to serve well. Better all-around athlete. She's more studious, and I think she's got that intangible fight in her, that, you look, that look in her eye. If you look at the promotional photo used for this mm -hmm. uh, week, you see she is the only one not smiling. She's got that fighter look in her eye, that heavyweight Las Vegas battle that she's waiting for and I think that this is something that will come into play tomorrow but that to me is the match of the week awesome Andrea thanks a lot once again for this WTA finals update all right that'll do it and we'll see you again don't forget check back all week long right here on the prime sports radio network for Andrea Leanne's WTA finals hot shots from Singapore we'll see you tomorrow and keep listening on the Prime Sports Radio Network.